Trapping plays a very important role in modern-day wildlife management. Professional wildlife biologists monitor fur bearer populations to maintain a healthy and sustainable harvest of this important, renewable natural resource. Trapping provides recreation and income for licensed trappers across this country. Who's Your Trapper Outdoors is brought to you by Who's Your Trapper Supply. J3 Outdoors, manufacturer of the Hag Bracket and Body Trap Spring Clip, Leatherwood Creek Trapping Sense, Who's Your Trapper Deer Sense, and Leatherwood Wildlife Art. Okay, thanks for joining us for this episode uh, 13, Who's Your Trapper Outdoors. On this episode, we're just going to be doing some um, local water trapping, primarily based on some nuisance work, if you want to call it that. So, man, more than anything, just helping um, helping some landowners out that are friends of ours um, and uh, have given us permission other places. So, just kind of, uh, I think all most trappers do that. They can relate to that, that, that kind of thing. I think you can also relate to um, the uh, quantity of muskrats uh, described versus the quantity of muskrats actually caught. So I think all of us can relate to that too that have been doing this a while. I want to thank our sponsor, uh, J3 Outdoors, Jeff Haggerty. It's got uh, awesome products for water trapping, which you'll see in this video, uh, and also um, uh, good American made stuff, good quality stuff. Uh, so if you're a water trapper, be sure to check out his uh, products. Um, can't say enough good things about them. I want to thank everybody for the orders. Um, it's, uh, really appreciate it. That's what makes all this possible. Um, and, uh, to be honest, we feel like we need to give something back to the trapping community. That's by, um, why we do the YouTube show, um, and, uh, to help trappers out and also the, uh, trap house podcast, uh, just, uh, feel like we're giving something back to the trapping community. Um, you also want to mention the, uh, show us your bottle contest. Uh, basically you, a uh, picture of uh, what uh, Leatherwood product that you used, uh, which would include um, top dog uh, predator bait, um, and uh, submit those with your successful catch. You can do end of the season, you can do individual catch, you can do daily catch. Uh, it's great if you're in the photo, we appreciate that. But all the information is on the homepage of the website. Just go to who's your trapper supply, uh, dot com. On the on the homepage, there is a link for show us your bottle contest. It's got an email. Um, that you submit the uh, photos through, and uh, it's it's quite simple. So, and if you if you don't do that, then you can always uh, just send a hard copy through the mail. We'll we'll accept them that way as well. So, uh, um, pretty simple. We uh, and then of course you have a chance to win a um, uh, hundred dollar gift card, and that will be based on a drawing. I think we're accepting photos until March fifteenth. And then we'll have the drawing after that. But all the information is on the website uh, under the Show Us Your Bottle Contest link. So I think that's it. Oh, let me mention one more thing. So we've got a Trap House podcast coming out here shortly. And that will be uh, covering the um, uh, trip that we just recently took in Arkansas. So kind of discussing that and uh, some, some things related to that as well. So i uh, be looking for that here uh, fairly shortly. So I think that's it. Hope you enjoy the show. So we're setting this pond up for some muskrats. Got an invitation here. Muskrats are supposedly terrible and there's lots of them here. And, and I can't tell you how many times <laughs> in my life I've heard that and I show up and there might be one or two holes in the whole place or there might be just a couple muskrats. And that's, I think, the case here too. So anyways, we're just going to satisfy the circumstances and uh, 
set up a couple hags brackets and we've got a one den over here that we found we're going to stick a colony in front of that and um that's what we're going to do so it's, it's not a it's not a real big pond and they mow clear of the edge there's no cattails or anything so it's going to be this will probably be a pretty quick in and out here so kind of rocky down there but trap just below the water slide the carrot down Make, somebody, them, make so, them reach for it. Yeah, somebody asked the other day about how far we put the carrot up from the trap. We're probably about a, about a foot. Yeah, it's about, yeah, about uh, 12 inches. Yeah, so. so. Yeah, make them swim around that pole and they can't quite reach. They got to climb up on something. And once they hit that pan, it's game over. The weight of the trap will help submerge them and keep them under to drown. So we got one muskrat hole and one actually just swam out of there just a second ago so yeah we're gonna put a colony in there make sure this door will open it's a little bent always check your doors <laughs> i think we're good now this is the only run that we saw that looked Looked good, any mud coming out of it. And just in case, we'll, we'll flag this so we don't forget. That'll keep the trap from tipping over. But that should do it. Super simple. Got the pan set pretty high. Give them something to stand on, you know. Need a carrot, carrot man. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Pretty good. Yep. How old is that? That carrot? Years. <laughs> they still pretty good. They keep a long time. Very visible. We should have brought some muskrat licious with us. We forgot it at the shop. We might uh hit it with that tomorrow when we come back so all right so there's behind this pond there's this little ditch i'm not really seeing any rat sign in here but if there's one swimming up and down we're just going to basically just narrow this down with some colony traps got room for this looks like three across will do it this one's a little bent make sure your doors are always working so we got we got three lined up here to get that covered. Yep, we're gonna put some grass over the top of it, kind of blend it in, make them think they can just swim right under it. Rocky sandy bottom here. There we go. Which is not really conducive to muskrat trapping, but since we got running water, these poles kind of help hold the debris from floating away. <laughs> yeah. It's kind of nice. What do you think, Charlie? Probably used just a handful right there, yeah, on this front right end. On the front end? Yeah. I'm we'll actually be kind of surprised if these catch anything because I've not seen any sign in this creek, but we'll see. We ain't hurt anything. Time will tell. Yep.
Woods Trapping Products by J3 Outdoors, the most versatile and efficient trapping devices on the market. All right, this is the first check on this colony muskrat trap here. The only hole in this problem muskrat pond. Got one big muskrat in there. I think we got two in there. Is there two in there? A little muddy. Yep, two. Two. Trying to go into the hole. Well, when, when, last night when we were here, they when we got here, they swam out of the hole. So. Yeah. So this is kind of one of those help out the community a little bit as far as people we know and or people in the area and maybe gain a place to trap. We set a couple coyote traps. So, but like I said yesterday, I don't know how many times I've been called out on these kind of places where muskrats are just a huge overrun problem, and it never turns out to be much of anything to be honest with you but um anyways i think a lot of people can relate to that so. yep well, we got the call there's hundreds of muskrats here <laughs> and today we have two <laughs> that reminds me of that deal in tennessee last year where that guy told us that the trapper just in this one small area what was it justin 90 beavers or 80 beavers or some crazy thing oh it was crazy something not even physically possible yeah. or that made any sense. Okay. Check it again tomorrow, see what happens. So if you are muskrat trapping and you're in a place where you don't have to worry about the traps getting stolen, those fiberglass rods with that piece of gorilla tape on the really stand out well mark your traps don't have to search for them it's just the best way just the best way to mark your traps and and um, they really stand out all right muskrat trapping you gotta love it i wish we had more rats in this area really to be honest with you but uh i was helping some people out nuisance job we ended up catching five muskrats there uh we only showed two but the other days where we caught it was just downpour rain we didn't even want to bring the camera out into that weather so we pulled them real quick one was in the colony trap that was in the ditch that we showed and uh the other two were back-to-back -back nights in the hags bracket with the carrot um like i said it was just a rain out so we didn't bring any cameras out those those days so um now we're going to jump to some nuisance beaver work which can be good for finding lo new locations to trap uh Typically, farmers, they do not want beavers tearing up the ditches, um, causing issues with the crops being flooded out. So if you can take care of the beaver situation, they'll more than likely give you an opportunity to go in there and trap predators later on, uh, coyotes, so to speak. And this location that we're trapping, that's kind of what happened. We're actually on two different properties just because we are taking care of the beaver nuisance issue that he has. So that's working out for us, and that's a lot of fun too. And it's really nice because it's pretty close to the house. So uh, take a look at that, and thanks for watching. All right, so we got these beavers are in the creek. This creek's typically really shallow, so obviously they got pretty backed up. But you can see right here in the mud, they got a trail coming right, right up out of here. They just were on this certainly this morning or last night. So I'm just gonna find a place in Indiana, we have to have our 330s completely submerged. So I'm going to find a place in here just to, because they're coming up in this little canal area, put a 330 in here and should be able to get him the first night. So we'll see what happens. But this is um, this classic location. See that right there, Justin? What? It's like a, there's like there, a hole right here. Probably goes out into there. See it? No. Yeah. All right, so we got this little peninsula right here. A set of 330 back behind where Jake's at. Jake's on the camera. And we've actually got a whole line of um, caster mounds that the beavers here have made marking their territory. So I'm actually going to put in a, a 
the territorial caster mount of a different, what they'll think is a different beaver and uh, see what we can do. I'm going to use a TS-85 on this one, foot trap. He's got nice big jaw spread. You know, don't, with beaver trap, a lot of times you have a lot of flipped off traps because you're using too, the, you know, you use too small of a jaw spread. So this helps it eliminate a lot of that. And I'm using this one. You can set up drowner slides, but this one I'm actually, I've got about 12 foot of chain on here. And I'm going to set this trap. And I'm actually just going to stake it here on the bank. And then basically he'll just get, he'll just swim around and uh, get hung up on that. Or not hung up, but just basically they're normally drowned. So um, we're not going to take the time to run a drowner slide or anything. That These are much quicker, much more efficient. Top Dog Predator Bait. Success speaks for itself. All right, doing a nuisance beaver job. Um, this area is, of course, backed up with a bunch of water. There's a dam further on down. Uh, there's a hut on the other side, but there's this little channel that cuts in here. I don't know if Charlie can show over here, and it slides in into another little finger that comes out. Uh, Charlie's got some con bears in there. We pit one at the mouth here. Then there was actually a hole right here, and um, I staked it off. And we have a beaver coming out of that hole. There's another hole on that side, so I don't know if it's just a cut through underground or something was actually in here as a den. So he was coming out, he or she. Then Charlie yeah, had set this one. Can't really see it very well. We'll pull yeah, that out. It's and hard just... to see. So yeah, we had a double. Yeah, a double. <laughs> a double on beavers right next to each other. I was worried one. One was gonna get in the trap, flop around long enough to get into the other trap. Knock the other much, one over. But it pretty much knocked him, so. We're just gonna pull this out here with the setters and reset it. The hole is at a, a little different angle. I'm on, The trap's almost at like a 45 sitting on the bank like this. I use some T-bars to help stabilize it. So, something a little different than what we're normally doing out in the cornfield, so. <laughs> All right. Here's the beaver that was right beside Justin's. Pull this out of here. And they um, they didn't do, they didn't do much. They weren't alive very long. So we got these two smaller beavers right here beside each other, which tells us there's probably several more here. But so we'll get these reset. And um, these stands are just awesome, even if you're. This is deep enough for these stands for sure. But even if you're in shallow water, the taller stands are just so much handier than the shorter ones, I think. So, um, anyways, got him pretty much suitcased in there. He wasn't going anywhere. Take him out of there. On these stands too, if you if you wire the tops or clip the tops or whatever, it keeps them from getting all bent up. So, if you don't do that. It's pretty hard on them. Pretty hard on the stand. So. Yeah, these setters are awesome. They just lock in place. That way you can do what you need to do to the trap and then got the safety hooked and we just release it. So it sure beats fighting those ones where you're trying to hold it with one hand and and um, fighting the trap, fighting the setter, the whole thing. This way you're, you're, you you takes this, the bent handles gives you so much more leverage and then the locking device and just, just a good setter. So. Beaver number three. 
There Yep. So it's on just basically a little run, kind of an indention there where that rug run starts and stuck a 330 in there on the trail. And did you put any lure on that, Justin? Yes, I did mimic a little bit of a caster mound to the side. It's a beaver gland. They got to kind of swamp you back in here where the water's been filling in. They're coming and going. There's a couple fresh, fresher chews down in here. So it looked pretty decently active. There's slides everywhere, so you just got to pick out which ones you think would be best. So we're just going to get him out of the trap and reset it. That's a little bit bigger than yesterday's. Yep. And I actually have a set right here. It's all fenced in. It's on a trail. So. We've got some TS-85 set, but they haven't done anything yet, so... You know, people see this. We had a guy last year down in Tennessee tell us, he said we had a place and it didn't have this kind of beaver sign. It didn't have much at all, actually, but it had some. But he says, I call it the last guy that was in here caught, I don't remember what it was. He said like 80 beavers or 60 beavers or some absolutely crazy thing. And I mean, Justin and I just looked at each other and laughed, you know, and typically, you know, a location that had generational beaver population you know there might be six to eight or whatever in that colony and and um you know here this guy's thinking the last trapper caught that you know crazy numbers well obviously that wasn't true but you know there's 80 beavers in here yeah <laughs> colony of beavers can just make an incredible amount of sign and i've trapped beavers in locations where there was just one just living by itself and it and it alone made all kinds of signs so um it's kind of amazing what they can do and how much sign they can make and it's particularly if they've been here for a while so all right got him out of that tangled mess definitely heavier than yesterday's yeah water's just deep enough here so in Indiana, we have the law where the 330s have to be submerged. They can't be any part of them being out of the water. So it definitely is a disadvantage. It's something we need to get changed. But um, for years, we've had to deal with it like this. So use dead sticks for your guiding. Otherwise, they'll be if it's green, they'll be eating it. So yep, just kind of fence them in, force them through the trap. Sure you take your safeties off. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Don't forget to take your safeties off. That way you're not laying in bed at two o'clock in the morning realizing, oh I wonder if I took my safeties off. So we've all done that. That's it. That's it. Per it. Pretty simple. I can get this thing across the dam without falling. <laughs> yeah, this water is super deep. It's probably seven, eight foot deep, maybe. Yeah. Obviously, there's no way to cross here, so Justin's crossing the dam right there. It's a little hard to see the contrast when he's crossing the dam. That, and it's a tall dam. I mean, it's, and they've got more dams further down the creek, so they've, they've been here a while. If I go in, save me, Charlie. All right. Look out. I was worried about that. <laughs> That's a heavy one. The thing about beaver carrying, carrying them, there's no way to, good way to carry them. <laughs> Get up the hill is a challenge. Okay. I've got question and answer and I've got several here that I'm going to just reference some are a little more involved than others one is why do you take why do you leave the membrane on a muskrat skin you're going to leave it on uh, mink as well you can leave it on predators too as long as there's no fat underneath it um, the main reason that you're leaving it on a muskrat is that actually if you take it off it's going to go as damaged and what that does is you're exposing the hair root or the the uh, hair follicle 
and the guard hairs then would fall out. So when they leave that on and they go through the tanning process, in the tanning process they go through a pickle solution and then they go to a tanning solution. The pickle solution plumps the skin up and then at that point they can be shaved, which thins the skin, and that would take that membrane off at that point. And because the, sh the skin is plumped up, then it's holding on to that hair follicle. So um, that uh, is the reason that you leave that on. So. Uh, it, it's very important to leave it on and it's a heck of a lot easier to leave it on if you go to taking it off You'll notice that that's a lot of work. So if you're taking it off It's gonna you're gonna be uh, hurt price-wise and also you just don't need to work that hard. So leave it on um, the um, Somebody mentioned about you know uh, trap cover uh, You know what's best, you know whether it's peat moss or cover holes or um, um, uh, Wax dirt um, and he said he what he did was um, they um, have a lot of plantations where they're at, so they take wood chips and they, once they decay down for uh, I think he said a couple of years, it's basically just like a um, decayed sawdust, and it works as great as a trap cover. So you know, there's clearly things that you probably have in your local area. Maybe that would be an excellent trap cover. So uh, certainly keep all that stuff in mind. Um, you know, around farming situations or uh, natural situations like this is a logging logging type thing um, all of those are things that you might want to consider as a trap cover ultimately I think wax dirt is um, one of the best but um, uh, it's it's sometimes it's difficult enough to get enough made or sometimes it's difficult to just find the time to make it um, and it is heavy to carry around that's one that's probably the, one of the bigger negatives with it so um, but um, uh, cover holes work well They've, there's negatives to all of it so but uh, the best thing about all trap covers that don't freeze or are less prone to freeze is that it keeps you going when the weather uh, says that, you know, when it makes it difficult to trap. So, um, another one about can you freeze caster uh, and then deal with it later? Certainly. Uh, freeze it, put it in a bag. I, I, you know, if it's going to be a while, if you're going to keep it for a year or so, I double, triple bag it. Uh, make sure it's not going to freeze or burn and dry out. And then take it out, clean it up, get the membrane off, hang it up, let it dry, and then uh, it would be ready to sell. So, but yeah, you can definitely freeze it. And that's kind of one of them things, if in doubt, just freeze it. So if you're saving coyote glands or fox glands or any of that stuff, um, you know, just stick it in a jar and freeze it. So that's your best bet. One, uh, we've talked about this before, carcass disposal. You know, when we're on a trip and we're in uh, um, out and... Uh, we, we skin critters we uh, basically just hold the carcasses off uh, a good distance you know down on a deep ravine or down on a holler or, or something and cover them up with some leaves or or um, you know make sure that they're not uh, exposed um, there are, these areas are remote um, there are areas that uh, be very unlikely that anybody would ever come across them do have to be responsible about um, disposing of carcasses. People don't want to see it. Um, there's some certain states have certain laws that if you do, you can't have it in so many yards of the road, that kind of thing. So be sure to check all that that stuff out, um, you know, before you before you dispose of carcasses. Uh, here at the shop, we actually have a service that comes and picks them up. It's it's costly. It's not it's not. Um, it's not for everybody, but because we have the taxidermy business, we, we have that service, and uh, they do come and pick, pick up uh, the carcasses. Um, on the how-to section of the videos, we have a video on coyote trap placement in regard to the dirt hole, and somebody asked if that would work for fox, and it is. That's the, it will work on fox just fine. We generally make the same set for... Uh, if we're making a dirt hole, we're making the same set for fox, coyotes, and bobcats, and basically we're hugging the hole with the trap. Um, the, if you got an adequate uh, bait in that hole that that animal wants, you need to guard the hole because that's that's the place that he's you know that you can be guaranteed that he's going to put his foot. Um, one more question, and somebody asked about: Do you want to set corners or points? When you're setting a fence row in a field or you know just so you wouldn't set any all their irregularities and I, I guess i'd have to answer that more by it depending on what it looked like in the situation that you were in um corners a lot of times the animal may may cut the corner he may not just go directly in and directly out so that corner kind of depends on 
Uh, if it's a corner and there's a gate there and it's an open gate and goes into another field and it's more of a crossing, then yeah, it's, that's, that's a great point, uh, a great location to trap. Um, a point um, would probably be better than a corner in, um, in some uh, aspects. Um, it depends on how long of a fence row it is. You know, there's a lot of different factors in that. But corners, a lot of times the animals will actually cut the corner. So um, the, one that I, the one that I think it's put this in a video originally was Andy Weiser. And he said, you know, he's trapped with a lot of people and you'll be on a forest service road, for instance. And the road makes a bend. Well, the animal is going to take the short side of, of the bend to, make, to turn the corner. So the inside of the bend here would be a better trap location than out on the outside of the bend um, just because you're going to be more likely to have that trap where the animal's at so you always got to kind of keep those things in mind um, you know I can think of plenty of corners in a field where literally the animal would have to go down and just come right back out um, and they I'm not saying to set out you know where he's going to cut the corner because that gets a little more difficult to guess I'm just saying that you might set some other irregularity along that fence row a point uh, or some other geographical uh, landmark that would be more advantageous to set in that corner. So um, I hope that helps. It's a little. I know that's a little bit. Um, it's it, it, finding locations is always. A, a, I think all of us uh, probably struggle with that to a certain point. Um, after a while, you'll you'll get it. It's it will start clicking, um, but. Um, it, it will take a while maybe to get an eye for it. So anyways, I appreciate the questions. Uh, keep, keep them coming. Appreciate all the views, by the way, on, um, on YouTube and, uh, um, and all the listens on the podcast. So anyways, keep those questions coming. Hey guys, thanks for watching Hoosier Trapper Outdoors. Just wanted to let you know that we do have our new fall catalog out. It's got lots of great products in there um, and photos. So if you would like to receive one, please visit us at www.hoosiertrappersupply.com and it'll walk you through on how to request one. Um, you can also print one out from there if you don't wanna wait on one um, to come through the mail. We also would be more than happy to take a request over the phone at 317-881-3075. We are a complete trap line um, outfitter. We offer lots of great lures and baits, um, and we also have a complete line of deer scent. Yep, and also while you're online, follow us on social media. We're on Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, of course. We really appreciate it. You could uh, give us a like or share if you, if you can, and uh, subscribe to the YouTube channel. That'd be great. And don't forget about the podcast that we have, the Trap House Podcast and the Fur Shed series. And also there's a Facebook group that I started called the Catch Circle and that's open to anyone. It's a great trapping community. Ask questions, uh, buy and sell lures and old traps, whatever. Anything trapping related, it's welcome. So we appreciate that and we'll catch you on the next episode. Yeah. Thank you for all the orders and uh, supporting our small family owned and operated business. We truly appreciate it. Join us on February 5th for the next episode of Who's Your Trapper Outdoors. <laughs>